I want to start covering some important apps each month that have either just been released or received a major update. This first video is going to be a bit more than just the last month. There were some major updates that I haven't had a chance to cover yet. One of my favorite apps, Things 3, updated their Apple Watch app. Its syncing is quite a bit faster and way more reliable. I found myself using it a lot more the last couple of months. It's been really handy to be able to track my tasks right from my wrist. Aurora is an app a lot of designers might like. One of its awesome features is the ability to take a photo and extract color from it. This will return the hexadecimal code for that color. Aurora will also show related colors from different palettes. There is also the ability to create collections of colors. Right now I'm saving some ideas for what I want to paint my studio. Aurora is a really interesting app to have around if you do anything with color. I guess it's 2009 because I'm back to RSS for news. Considering everything that is going on in the world, I wanted to more tightly control what news I was getting and where it was from, and also not to let algorithms decide what I see. I started by using the newly updated Net Newswire app. It has a great native UI, so it works well with the trackpad. You can two finger swipe between articles and two finger swipe up and down to scroll. It has a few syncing options, but honestly, I use the on my iPad as the host. I do all my reading on here and I've been trying to pare down unnecessary subscriptions. It has a built-in share sheet for sharing articles, plus its own favoriting system so I can save articles if I wanna come back to them later. It's perfect for my needs. Shift Screen is the app that you want to use if you're working with an external display and an iPad. The developer emailed me about a month or so ago and has been adding more and more to it since. This app allows you to display documents or web pages or both at the same time on an external monitor without it being pillar boxed. Meaning if you have a 16 by nine display, it takes up the whole display. You can even use this to watch YouTube videos in full screen. Recently, the developer updated the app for better trackpad support. If you use an external monitor with an iPad, this is a great app to check out. I just hope in the future, Apple updates iPad OS so the whole OS and third-party apps do this natively. For now, this is a good option to use with documents and web pages. Pushcuts got an awesome feature update. It will now run as a full-time automation server. You just have to have a device always on and with Pushcuts automation server up. I sacrificed my old 6th generation iPad to the Pushcuts gods. The way this works is go to the automation server section, then go into server actions. You can pick from shortcuts and home kit scenes here. Just tap on one and copy the URL. Now you can use a service like Zapier or something that supports webhooks. Build whatever automation you want with whatever automation service you would like, and then use the webhook action for that. Paste in the URL. Now go back to push cuts and turn on the automation server. Whenever your automation is now triggered, it will run the shortcut or home kit scene associated with that webhook automatically. There's a ton of cool things I've been doing with this, like using the Philips Hue buttons to trigger these, but I'm gonna save that for another video. Launch Cuts is a cool front end launcher for shortcuts. If you're like me, you probably have a ton of shortcuts and the native shortcuts app doesn't do a great job at organizing them. Launch Cuts allows you to organize all your shortcuts in a bunch of different ways. You can create a folder and manually add them or automate the adding process based on options like color and a whole bunch of other criteria. You can go into settings and even assign keyboard shortcuts to shortcuts or folders to launch when you are in the app. I've been slowly working on making this the way I manually launch shortcuts. There's even a handy button in the top left corner that jumps you into the shortcuts app if you need to make any edits. The one downside is you have to run a shortcut for launch cuts to see what shortcuts are available. So if you add a new one or delete one, you have to run this again. This is a limitation from Apple. There is no API for developers to see what shortcuts you've made. But overall, this is a great app for organizing lots of shortcuts. Home Plus is an app I've been wanting to talk about for a while. It's a great replacement app for managing your smart home accessories. I mostly have smart lights and switches, and I always go to this app over the default home app. Everything about it is just better. The way it displays accessories and groups just makes more sense. There are more options for automations, or at least they are presented in a better way. Even the icons for the accessories are just better than the home app. 
I hope the home map gets some TLC this year, but in the meantime, I'll be using Home Plus to control my house. So that's the list of new apps and app updates for this month. I'll be back with another video like this soon, but in the meantime, I have a lot of other cool stuff planned. Thank you for watching and have a great day.